anything down, I want to make sure I write it down here. In okay. Notes. All right. So um, when we get to body fat, we get body fat, and um, and we kind of look at a macro profile. What some people like to do is like everything. For example, 50, 30, 20, and they use 50% carb, 30%, uh, 30% protein, or 30% fat. Um, they flip the protein and the fats around, so it would be 30% protein or 30 or 30% fat, 20% protein, 20% fat the other way. But the, the problem is, is as your body fat raises, your ability to get carbs to the right place, it goes down. Okay, so I'm giving you, um, I'm going to give you 40, 30, 25. Now, the 40 can be your protein intake, okay, or your fat. But I'll just give you the protein intake 40, 40%, 40 right? I'll fix that. I'll get, I'll get, okay, 40%. And then your... Um, your fat intake 35% and then your carb intake will be 25. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, 2,541 calories because that's your, your, uh, your to maintain was 30, 3177. 3177. Okay. So um, we gave you a 20% deficit. Sometimes you can make deficits too large. Like people, they would say, okay, you're 31, let's cut it to 1,500. But that's like a 50% deficit. So you'll lose fast in the beginning, but then when the body starts fighting back, what are you going to do? So we made the smaller because you always have a choice. You can say, okay, this is your activity level, and I can use activity level to, to make that deficit. Or I can use calories. Right now it's calories, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we gave you 40% protein. And the, I, these can be fudged around because the calories, the most important thing for you is going to be the calorie intake first. Okay. okay. Um, macros are second and they do make a difference. Okay, so that'd be 254 254 grams of protein. So next, of course, we're gonna set uh, we're gonna set those fats. All right. Okay. So that's what we call it. 99, 99 uh, grams of fat here. And that's 35 percent. Yeah, 35 percent. Okay. So now, of course, we can always just figure out what's left. But uh, the next is um, your carbs, your carb intake. So that was 25, was it 25%? 25%. 25. Okay, 635, 635 calories. That's divided by four. So that's 159. Because each one of those calculations is a little different for carbs, yes. fat, protein. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, where the problem or where uh, things arise and stuff like that is like, how, do you, how are you going to split that? Okay, so you look at well, the first thing I always look at is obviously how many time, how many meals you plan to eat per day, because at 254, you know, um, if you ate three times a day, that's bigger than 80 grams per meal of protein. So you take something like chicken breast, right? So a chicken breast would be usually about or chicken anyway, usually about seven calorie, sorry, seven grams per ounce. So you're looking at like 10, 12 ounce chicken breast. So that's when you want to, you know, you would have to break that down into more meals. It's like, once the macros and the calories are the same, um, the amount of meals didn't matter unless they got too big. In this case, they would get kind of big with the protein. Even if I, I, I based protein off your lean body mass, okay, which I could in this case, if, if it's a problem. So hold that in the back of your mind. But, um, um, so you're looking, you may look to go to more meals because like just going from three to four, um, that now goes down to 60, which you're going from something over 10 ounces down to what, seven by 60, um, eight plus, like around eight ish for the protein. Okay. Okay. So, um, but bringing that to five. Now it's down to 50 and you're around six ounces. So you don't have to eat a big meal, you can... They could be smaller and that's kind of that, I guess that's kind of where that could be beneficial. But in the studies and what they were looking for, between three and six, 
at the same calorie intake, there was no difference. Okay. Okay. But you might not have the luxury of all that. So, um, is it better if you're if you're doing five meals? Is it better to balance them versus make an equal? Yeah. In other words, is it better to have five equal meals? Five equal whatever that's giving you this. Um. Or is it better to have hey a little bit heavier in the morning, a little bit lighter, and that you're you know what's the that one because okay now one of the things that they the people always they, it's an opportunity an opportunity um, to to get ahead because it's like when you start playing with pre post and um, uh, pre pre intra and post nutrition mm -hmm. there's benefits where like you're able to hold on to muscle you're better you know burn body fat you're better uh, to perform better or recover better. Because the name of the game is you want to beat yourself up, but you want to recover too, right? So um, that's kind of an opportunity. And the thing is, you know about the body, when uh, around exercise, your body becomes more carb sensitive. So it's better at getting carbs to where they need to be. So like basically, you take the carbs, your body turns it into uh, glycogen to store in your muscles, right? right. Okay, so you're better prepared for the next workout. You have an energy source to draw from, you know, without causing the body much stress. Okay, so um, long way to answer, it is not necessarily better to be equal um, because you, what you can always do is, so like this carb intake is 159. You could say, okay, I'm gonna take, um, let's say we take 70 grams and I could put it around my workout. You can put 20 grams before and then 50 grams after. You can say, okay, this is my, um, sorry, 254 of my protein. I usually use a, a formula um, for uh, post-workout nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's um, six grams times uh, your body weight. 26 times your body weight in grams of uh, protein. Okay. Uh, so at in kilograms. I'm sorry, in kilograms. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, my, a lot of my mentors are Canadians, so I, I forget. Yeah. Like I know it in here, but I, I forget. Yeah. So right. um, uh, let's see. Let's call it 260 divided by 2.2. .2. Okay, that's 118 times 0.6. Okay, so that's 71. So you can go up as high as 71 um, grams of protein mm -hmm. after a workout. Mm -hmm. Equals. But equals. you want your carbs oh. to be down after a workout, right? Yeah. Um, no, you want them, you can, you can bring them up, like right afterward? Yeah. You can bring them up. Okay. Yeah, right afterward, you can bring them up. Because like I said, especially if you're fast, um, usually like when you see me mine, I have mine as I'm walking out the building. You know, um, but um, yeah, it'll um, you know it helps with growth recovery and stuff like that. Then you can have that with carbs. So you can say, um, even if you just did fifty grams of carb of carb there, and then you can just you know cater the rest of your meals to hit the balance to hit the the balance of it. So yeah, setting one gram for the carb, and you're doing that as you as yeah, you walk I'm out. Work, working out at night, mm -hmm. I don't want to work out after eating a full meal, so I, mm -hmm. I don't usually have my dinner until after my workout. Right, right, and that's kind of the deal where, where um, when people look at uh, they call it meal this meal timing, and it, it right. was a hot topic research years ago. Um, what it is, what it was was there were some studies that were saying that uh, post workout nutrition was good. That, that was helpful, and then some that wasn't. And so they tried to find uh, what the answer was. And what it was, it was comp uh, situations, it was situational. So one situation was, um, was basically no pre-workout nutrition within two hours of uh, working out, no intra-workout nutrition, and then post-workout nutrition. So if you didn't have pre or intra, Post work, getting post workout fast mattered more, right. okay. But if you had pre or intra, it didn't matter as much to get that fast. 
But I'll usually just say, because it's like requiring people to think and giving too many options, I'll just say, no, get in. If you can do it, get it in as you're walking out the building. But in, in uh, the science and the science is conditional, you know what I mean, based on when you had your last meal and uh, uh, stuff like that. So um, that was kind of a long, drawn out way, but then it, there's, a, there's a, a point of understanding to get to. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of, that's kind of it. It was um, based on, you know, what you're doing with your post workout and all that stuff, nutrition and pre, because I do a pre, intra, and post because it's, you know, a lot of aminos in this performance for me, right? Yeah. So um, um, that winds up, what, minus 50 plus? Okay, so um, 50 and then, what is three servings of those gummy bears? 24, 24, 72, 72, and then plus, 19 grams of protein for the intra because it's amino acids like people don't count amino acids but amino acids are broken down protein you know what i mean they right. form protein so they they have a caloric value just like protein does you know four calories per gram and then uh it's like 20 in the pre um workout um yeah so the uh, a couple, couple questions one is with this pre and post workout and the meal planning mm -hmm. type of thing is there a recommended amount of time each day, where and I'll say day night, where you're 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 fasting? Where you're not, in other words, when you go to you should not eat after nine o'clock. You should not eat before. Does it matter? That's before seven um, in the morning or something. Mind you, I eat up until two or three in the morning. Cause okay, because you, your workout may be late. It is late. Yeah, yeah. but here's here's a kicker. Um, sometimes when people do that. It's their way of modifying this, and they don't know it. So, like, because I used to get a lot of people to say, "Oh, yeah, they told me don't eat after 8 p.m. or, or whatever," and it, which is now now it's a form of intermittent, intermittent fasting, right? Right. So the question for me that needs to be answered with that is because people are touting that as magical, and what I'm seeing is if you have less of a window where you can eat food in, is that adjusting the amount of calories that you eat? Because remember, if you're going for the weight loss thing, right? Calories is most important macro second and then you know what you do with all your vitamins and minerals and all that stuff that kind of comes later meal timing comes later right so if I give you less of the time to eat is that reducing your calories you know what I mean right so um, what I'm saying I'm mean, this is a long drawn out way to say is calories first so if you if you stay within this mm -hmm. it won't matter and, and it's it's okay to spread it out Yes. In other words, yes. Because, you know, come back, because of course my workout's from 6 to 7. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get home, it's 8 o'clock. Right. I've, you know, right. You know, so have a dinner. If I wanted to have a, a you know, depending on the numbers, mm -hmm. a protein bar at 10 o'clock, that's still okay or something, you know, something light or whatever. It, it's not like there's, hey, you need to, because some people will say, don't eat after 7 o'clock. No. Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working out at seven. Right, right, right. right. So I gotta eat. <laughs> right, no, you, yeah, definitely should because you you gotta fulfill your your recovery for post workout and stuff, right? Right. So yeah, the calories is the main thing. So it's just like if you're not taking this to, let's just say past thirty two hundred, right? Right. Then it's not a problem. You want to you know stay in your deficit, stay within your calories and your macros and stuff like that, and that's gonna be more important to feel than that. You know what I mean? And being in that post-workout numbers there, 71 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, mm -hmm. things like that, it's okay to have a sizable meal then, even though it's 8 o'clock at night. At, at, outside of this? Or yes, as long as you're watching your numbers for the whole day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because this is, like I said, this is, this is what's going to matter more okay. um, for it. So, um, yeah, as long as you're fulfilling this and stuff like that. Um, but then at the same time, you know, you have, I mean, if you, if you wipe this aside, you know, you have this on the side and you can, right. you know, you can do that. And the number calculations, when you start with that 3,100 to maintain 2,500. Right. Is the 20% deficit. That's calculated, that. calculated based on my, my current activity level that includes my workouts. Mm-hmm. Because if I wasn't working out or exercising at all, those numbers would be even further down. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we're we're compensating for the activity, what we're putting on the body, on the muscles. Yeah, it, 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 it's based on you. So it's like, okay, well, your body fat is, you know, you carry this much lean body mass, 
okay? Um, you know, the weight is this, this is your lean body mass, and this is your activity level. So this is like, then it's what it does, it says, this is what it takes to keep me where I'm at currently, the 3177, you know, unless there's some sort of uh, metabolic thing, which we don't know, we can figure it out. We can figure that out right. with current, with body fats and as you go along on your program, right? right. So um, um, that's what it takes to maintain. So what the science says is like, okay, now you can do def you do calorie deficits. You can, um, smaller deficits, and they're talking like 10, maybe 15, you know, um, but if you, ha if you have more to lose, you can have a bigger caloric deficit, but if you make it too big, it can come back and bite you because the body can, can, can slow things down to where you burn less. Right. And uh, there's somebody that should be here who has that problem. <laughs> yeah, they had this problem, they had that problem. But um, so we just said, okay, well, we gave you 20%, and this is what the 20% uh, came out to. And then we just gave you macros, because if we just, like I said, if we go with the higher carb count, cause, you know, um, you may not be able to get it to the right place yet. Okay. But as you get leaner, these, like, this isn't set in stone. As you get leaner, these will need to change. Right. Okay, because in the perfect world, we want higher carb because higher carb fuels activity better, right? And, you know, it makes the processes better, but then we don't want it to help keep you from getting lean. So with this for now, and then at a later date, it's going to change. Gotcha. Okay, so and that, that's kind of like the thing, because like people say, oh, well, diet is the way of life. You don't want, you don't want to, um, this, is not the, this is not the way that you want to live the rest of your life. It's like, no, because you're not supposed to diet the rest of your life. Right. You know, you're supposed to diet, you're supposed to, you're supposed to handle your business, get in shape, and then you get in shape, and then you go to something that's maintenance right. and stuff like that. So, yep. um, so yeah. tell me water and how that fits into this whole plan. Water, uh, and this was uh, pounds, um, point much, six. Like how much water point six. should be drinking and how often, and, and I know I don't drink as much as I should, so. <laughs> point six. Go get yourself a Stanley Cup. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, so I would have a little over a, 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 a gallon, like 156 ounces. Yeah. 100, uh, yeah 157 ounces. Yeah. Um, equation I, points between 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.7 uh, times your body weight. Okay, so. All right, and that's. In ounces, I'm sorry, in ounces. Eight ounce. Six. No, in ounces, so. Oh, um, in ounces, yeah, 5. so. 5.7 your body weight, okay. And is it, you know, I, I, when I was on a diet a while back, you know, obviously drinking water was a big part of it as well. But one of the things that I found that they didn't really give any guidance on was, um, if that's supposed to be spread out more through the day, or, yeah. you know, because what I would do is I, I get up and just try to drink all my water <laughs> and get it done with, right? Right, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and you're walking around waterlogged most of the day, but you're, you know, so I'm assuming that needs to be more spread out. Yeah, I, well. I'm usually like, if you've got five meals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of large. I mean, cause at five meals, because it's like 156, so you're talking 30 ounces, 32 ounces, if you only, uh, let me get back in the calculator. Yeah, so you divide that by five. Okay, that's 31, 31 ounces every time. So that's like basically a two liter, no, a liter, sorry, one liter or, or two quarts. Um, two quarts? Yeah, two quarts. Um, Anyway, it's it's a liter <laughs> okay. um, of water so every of water. time. So yeah, it's a lot of water. So you can just you know if you split that. Let's say if you worked out and you had 16 ounces during your workout, then that comes down, right? Right. You know. Um, yeah. So that would be it, would it be it though. That would be the um, 0.5 to 0.7 and of the water intake with, with the water because there's all kinds of waters out there now. Mm -hmm. too. So there's regular water, flavored waters, there's sugar free, there's the antioxidant waters, like the ice mm -hmm. things. 
is this just regular water or do those others count? Do they? I count them all. Count them all. I as long them, as it's not all. a soda. Um, <laughs> That's not water. <laughs> I even count soda. Well, okay, in certain cases I count soda too, but then you got to have the freedom in your macros to have soda. Yeah, and I cut you know soda I mean? out anyways when we start okay. working out. But yeah. I, I used but, to. I mean, because some people, they like, so I say, okay, if you have tea, tea, tea has caffeine, and caffeine is somewhat dehydrated. No, no, just, just don't okay. worry about it. Get there first, and then, you know, then maybe there might be something where, you know, you might have to adjust right. okay. one way or another, but definitely, you know, spread it out. You know, if you have, if you have the luxury of that spreading that out. So, just getting the quantity for me is, oh, you know, that's the harder part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, just, just always this. Um, and what would we say? 156? 150, 151? Ounces for me? Yeah. Uh, times five. 150, 157. One, 157 ounces of that. Yeah. Okay. Just give me an IV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's uh, little teeny tiny little girls running around doing drinking two gallons a day. I was like, man, you must float, dude. When you're trying to get close, you know. You don't have to be, and it's funny to be, I have someone who is so <laughs> accurate. She's laughing because she already knows, right? Yeah. She, did, this person would go out to a restaurant. Was it the birthday dinner? I think it was a dinner. She, but anyway. Her level of dedication is so extreme that she brought a scale to a restaurant. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a barbecue, right? It was a barbecue restaurant? Yeah, she, she brought a scale to the restaurant. Like she, I mean, and, and you would just wonder, it's like, cause like you look at her macros and she would tell you, she's like, what the, how are you getting one ninth of, uh, one ninth of a teaspoon of, of uh, olive oil? <laughs> and, not, she, and she was just that. Yeah. Um, dedicate don't have to be okay right. so it's just like usually okay if you can keep close to this calorie goal I just usually play at 10% okay so you know I mean being plus on, or minus 10% yeah if you're within the 10% just try you don't have to be super perfect if you're just within the 10% that, that just allows a conversation yeah. to occur where we could say okay I, I've been within 10% uh, 90 plus percent of the time and then this is my body fat says this this and then then you have a strategy but where it comes in is people don't track so that um so they don't know where they're at so when you're trying to fix things you're you're blind and the only way to fix them is to get some sort of baseline right. you know what i mean and then adjust from there you know and you also don't want to, you it's a day-to-day -day thing so you're not trying to correct the next day what you didn't hit the day before your you don't have to work that way right? people you could you can because at the end of the deal it's, it could be an average so if it's uh this 2541 times seven and then some some people make some days higher some people some days lower that would be over complicating things for for a lot of people okay you, you know so um it's not wrong but in certain cases it can be over complicating so it's just like just go just uh keep it the same and then there might be a case where like you have high activity some days and then most of the other days you don't and then you would just maybe set one on no um no activity set one day one nutrition day for no activity and then you have another day for high activity which they, people are doing carb cycling yep. but even that right now it's just it's too uh it might be a little too too uh extreme so one one more question with that mm -hmm. i work out three days a week with fitness plus one cardio day. So mm -hmm. I have days that I'm not working out, mm -hmm. but the, the same, these same numbers can work for all seven days in a week, mm -hmm. even though my level of activity is different from day to day. Yeah, yeah. Because even still, because remember your, your basal was 2050, 2050? Right. Right, so if that's if you slept for, for hours. right. As soon as you wake up, you burn more calories. As soon as you, you know, come to ride on the dry erase board, you burn, burn more calories. Walk around, whatever, you're gonna burn more calories. So, um, yeah, you'd be safe um, probably until you got really lean. Yeah. Then you gotta, then you gotta start nitpicking with strategies and, and stuff like that. But I think for right now, that's not gonna be a, a other ways to get there. Right?